What's up you guys? Welcome back again to your HeroClix headquarters. Exciting stuff today. This just came in the mail from WizKids. Huge shout out to WizKids. Thanks again for allowing me to unbox this stuff for you guys. So of course we've got the uh, miniatures game here, starter set. We've also got the uh, play at home kit for the X of Swords set. This is of course an X of Swords unboxing. You probably saw that in the title. Uh, but yes, so then we also have the a whole brick of this set right here with a legacy card on top to take a look at and of course the dice and token pack as well. So um, we're probably going to save the miniatures game for its own separate video. We're going to dive right into this brick and see what we get and uh, I'm super excited. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. All right, so here we go. We've got our X of Swords brick. So let's get the plastic off of this thing with style. All right, so here we go with our brick. I did, of course, safely remove our legacy card. We'll take a look at that in a second, but let's go ahead and get started. Um, now, unlike my normal unboxings, uh, I'm gonna have to actually take a look at each individual figure this time because we've only seen Scott Porter's unboxing. At least as of me recording this, I've only seen Scott Porter's unboxing. If you guys haven't seen that, of course, I always recommend checking those out. Um, and I'm having trouble <laughs> getting this one open, but okay, so normally I just kind of, you know, go through like the cool stuff, like the super rares, chases, primes, but we have not seen a lot of this set yet, and wow, we look at that. Booster 1, we already have a tarot card. Um, wow, that's, what is, there's like writing on that. Weird. Okay, so, uh. Yeah, Booster 1, we already got a tarot card to take a look at here, and uh, let's just also see who we pulled in this booster. Um, let's see. We've got uh, Sevothal, Sevaloth, Sev I can't even pronounce that, Sevalothi Vampire, okay. Okay, we got, um, what's her name here? Danny Moonstar, of course, we've got Cyclops, we've got Magneto, and we've got a Pyro. So, not bad there. Let's take a look. I'm really interested to see what this tarot card is. Ace of Pentacles. When a character uses Flurry and misses one or both attacks after resolutions, they may make a close attack. That is very nice. Kind of gives you a prob for your Flurry, in essence. Um, but a third attack if you miss at least one of your flurry attacks. Very useful. A lot of good flurry characters. Um, so let's take a look at the Sivalathi Vampire. 25 points. Just has like five clicks of stealth uh, and toughness with some Blades Exploit to start with and some Steel Energy for the rest of the dial. Not bad at all for a whopping 25 points. Uh, only keyword is monster, so just a really good generic little vampire guy there. Uh, definitely worth 25 points, I'd say. We got Danny Moonstar. She's got a rally with a 5 for opposing rolls, which gives her mind control. And then free, remove one of Danny Moonstar's rally dice to use mind control as free, but only to target a character she hit with an attack this turn. Not bad at all. You got running shot, triple target, end cap for 50 points, and uh, free mind control potentially as well on one of the hit characters. And then we got Cyclops Uncommon, who's got the recruiter trait. He's got improved targeting, can make range attacks while adjacent. Very nice. Um, so, of course, we've seen the recruiter trait before, but if you don't know, it says choose a character with the X-Men keyword this time. It's always different keywords. Um, in your KO area that hasn't been chosen for this effect and won't be generated or and wasn't generated by a recruiter effect. If you do generate a character with the X-Men keyword from your sideline that has a lower point value than the chosen character. This game, the generated character can't be replaced and your opponent scores them immediately instead of when they're KO'd. Um, pretty good stuff there. Uh, always nice to have that recruiter effect for more keywords. Running shot, 11 attack, 3 damage with a 7 range for 35 points. X-Men team ability, leadership, you know, what more can you ask for for 35 points, really? Um, penetrating blasts on the back end, so not bad. A nice little kind of secondary range attacker. Can also shoot while adjacent is really nice, and uh, that recruiter effect could come in handy. Up next, we've got a Uncommon Magneto with the recruiter effect. Okay, this time for the Brotherhood of Mutants keyword. So same effect, 
you know, if a Brotherhood of Mutants is KO'd, he can bring in another one off the sideline of lower points. Uh, running shot with 12 attack, 4 damage, penetrating blast, 18 invincible, 7 range, double target, flight. Great stuff. But Brotherhood team ability, only 100 points. Um, so pretty beefy dial there for 100. You also got a 30 point line on this Magneto, which gives you TK, invulnerability, and leadership. And of course, the recruiter trait. So I'm loving that for 35 points. Lots of utility for the team. Um, really good on Brotherhood teams. Uh, but, you know, you know, I, I think maybe a close contender to the 40.1 that lets you swap, but that one's probably still better. Uh, then we also got a rare Pyro that says, any way you want it, love. When Pyro clears action tokens, you may generate a flame construct within range and line of fire. Max three, so you can have up to three of these flame constructs which are autonomous, which is really nice. 10 attack with poison and one damage exploit, 16 super senses. Um, so not bad, just every time he clears, generate one of those things adjacent to somebody, make them have to run away or else they risk being poisoned. Also being autonomous is really nice to not count against your actions. Running shot, energy explosion, range combat expert. So we're talking 12 attack, four damage, six range, double target. Um, or, you know, 12 attack for the energy explosion too. Not bad at all. I really, really like this pyro. And the flame construct reminds me greatly of, uh, what set was that? Days of Future Past, I believe, had a pyro that also made a flame construct. So great first pack. But on to the second booster here. What have we got? Let's crack this thing open. Boom. Okay, looks like. We have got here a uh, cipher with a sword, pretty neat. Um, and who's that green priestess? Okay, um, we've got, is that Karima? It looks like the uh, they reused the sculpt of Karima, but let's see, what does that say? Omega Sentinel, okay, Omega Sentinel. Um, oh, that's Bishop and, um, ooh. Who is that? Oh, she popped off. Her foot popped off a little bit. That's okay. Nothing a little glue won't fix. Um, let's see. Who is that, though? Cora the Burning Heart. Cora of the Burning Heart. Okay. Have not heard of her. Gotta admit, haven't read this story. It was recommended to me a few times, and I do want to read it at some point. But uh, we will get to that eventually, hopefully. So if Cora of the Burning Heart is on an Araco or sword theme team, modify her attack and defense plus one. That's not bad. Sword, you know, being a great keyword now with the prime vision and some stuff that was in uh, Disney plus. And she's got charge flurry, enhancement and exploit weakness, improve movement characters as well. Very nice, only 65 points and uh, pretty great dial there. Lots of charge flurry, lots of that enhancement exploit and i do like that uh, the exploit combos with the flurry so uh that's gonna be pretty great and plus one attack and defense for a Rocco or sword theme teams i mean she's gonna be rocking a 12 and 18 only 65 points that's a lot of damage potential uh, i actually think she'd pair really nicely with a prime vision on a sword theme as like a secondary attacker Let's see, we got a uh, Bishop Uncommon, Great Captain of Krakoa, Leadership. When Bishop uses it and succeeds, this turn friendly characters that have X-Men team ability may use it as free, always nice. Traded Leadership, giving everybody free X-Men team ability if they can use it, uh, that's really nice. And then free if Bishop took damage since your last turn, heal him one click. And if uh, this turn he can use Range Combat Expert. Okay, so nice. If he takes damage, next turn you get to heal him a click and he can use Range Combat Expert, which is gonna be really good. Uh, 80 points, you know, he's got pretty high attack there. Uh, if he only randomly takes like one damage, then that's horrible for your opponent because he's gonna be coming back with a 13 for four running shot. I mean, full dial running shot toughness outwit is not bad. 80 or 35 points, pretty solid there with the traded leadership as well. Police team ability too. So he's going to be helping your other ranged attackers out quite a bit. I like that a lot. We got Omega Sentinel, who's got a rally die with a one. Um, blue is, I believe, friendly attack rolls. So free. Remove one of Omega Sentinel's rally dice to choose a friendly character within range. Chosen character can use police team ability until your next turn. Very nice. Handing out police TA. Super useful. Improved targeting, elevated, and uh, hindering is really also 
very useful. Uh, running shot, energy explosion, toughness, enhancement, only 50 points, five range, double target. Also has police team ability herself. A solid 50 point range attacker, in my opinion. Um, she's got, let's see, Sentinel, Detective, Future Police, Robot. Yeah, about what I'd expect. Not bad at all. Green Priestess, though, I don't think we've seen her. This is just a generic mystical character, it looks like. Um, with only 25 points, running shot, precision strike, with a four range, some energy shield, two damage. <clears throat> you know, nothing too crazy, but for 25 points... You can't really ask for much. She'd make, you know, some decent, like, mastermind fodder or something. Uh, so, yeah. Nice little just generic mystical character there. Mystical archer. Uh, and then Cypher has the sword bearer trait. This character starts the game with any sword equipment equipped. He's got empower and enhancement. So everybody next to him gets plus one damage all the time, basically. Only 25 points to give everybody plus one damage while adjacent. And uh, he can start with a sword. So lots of potential options there. Good stuff. All right. Man, we're only two boosters in. <laughs> All right. On to the third booster, you guys. What do we have next? We've only seen a couple rares, so all the crazy stuff is going to be here in a minute towards the end. Let's see. Ooh, all right. We've got another card. Sweet. Take a look at that in a second. We've got, it looks like Iceman... We've got a, uh, what's his name, a Gorgon. We've got a Magic. We've got Peepers. Everybody watch out for Peepers. And, uh, oh, snap, is that a super rare? Let's pop her out. I got to pop out the super rares and chases and stuff to take a look at here. Let's see. So, Wheat, we've got Abigail Brand. Um, I believe she was like, you know, the head of sword, right? In the comics, that green hair and everything. Let's take a look at what this stuff can do. Rip this open here. Boom. All right. Um, so starting us off, we got Iceman who has, when Iceman hits, each character modifies their speed minus two until your next turn. So that can really slow down your opponents. Not bad. 75 or 45. Uh, six range, double target, flight, running shot, 11 attack, 18 energy shield. Definitely a decent range attacker for sure. 45 points is, uh, I think I prefer him at that line. Um, you only lose in one attack and one defense, but uh, you're still getting pretty much the full use out of that, like slowing trait, if that's what you're going for. We got Gorgon here who says uh, he's got the sword bearer trait, so he can start the game equipped with any sword. Then he's got 75 and a 35 point line. Charge, combat reflexes, outwit. Um, again, I kind of like the 35 point line here a little bit better, just for the cheap outwit, cheap charge, kind of secondary attacker. He's also a team player, so he can copy X-Men or something else. Um, I think we'll really have to see what kind of sword options we have to kind of see how these characters could really be fleshed out some more. We got Magic, who's also a sword bearer. She's got an awesome special movement power that gives her face teleport with Passenger 4, but only to carry characters that share a keyword with her, which would be New Mutants, X-Men, and Mystical. So huge for X-Men and Mystical teams. Um, really, really need more carry power, right? <laughs> Probably not, but uh, she's only 25 points with that Passenger 4 and some Perplex on top and X-Men team ability, 9 range, and she can start with a sword equipped. So I think this is a really, like, power common in the set. Those good taxis, you know, they're always going to be useful. So keep an eye out on her and keep an eye out on Peepers here. This guy's nuts. Improved targeting for elevated hindering blocking characters can make ranged attacks while adjacent. Um, I mean, that's what's wrong with legacy Thanos, right? Basically. And then he also has friendly characters modify speed plus two of carrying peeper. Um, that's horrible. Like so good. If you have somebody with like flight charge flurry or something like, uh, who, who has sword that has flight and like a full move and flurry. Oh, I'm pretty sure Vision Prime does. So that's going to be a crazy combo to see. Shield team ability to help with range attacks and power to help with close attacks. X-Men team ability just in case. Precision strike with a five range so he can actually make attacks 
and, you know, be somewhat useful himself. Uh, for 25 points, right? Yeah, 25 points. This guy is absolutely nuts. But here we've got a super rare Abigail brand. She's got sword, X-Men, politician, and soldier keywords. Um, number 50 in the set, she has a trait which gives her leadership. And when establishing theme teams, characters on your starting force with the X-Men keyword gain the sword keyword. Oh, snap, you guys. So I really got to go back to Prime Vision again. Um, you know, you say sword, I immediately think Prime Vision right now. He's like the big heavy hitter of a sword team. And <laughs> this lady right here can put Prime Vision on a team with any X-Men, and X-Men is like the biggest keyword in the game at the moment. We have so many X-Men, it's crazy. So this is a crazy trait. Establishing theme teams, characters on your starting force with X-Men gain sword. So yeah, giving all your X-Men sword keyword to make a sword theme, pretty nuts. Uh, phase teleport, when Abigail Brand uses it and moves four squares or less, after resolutions, she may make an attack. Always good to see stuff like that. Phasing four, make a close attack, solid stuff there. She's got friendly characters within range that can use X-Men team ability, can use shield team ability. What? Oh my goodness. She is just, for 40 points, you guys, she is absolutely insane. 40 points. She's given all your X-Men shield uh, team ability. She, she's given them all the sword keyword to make theme teams. Um, and yeah, wow, she's got... Traded leadership. She's got face teleport. If she moves four or less, make an attack. Yeah, pretty nuts. And then she's also got penetrating blast, 11 attack for three damage. Um, pretty good dial length there, with some toughness, six range, shield team ability of her own. Pretty crazy stuff, man. That is nuts. I like her a lot. <laughs> I'm really glad I pulled her. She is super useful. Oh my goodness. Okay, what did we get here? What is this? We've got, when a standard character successfully breaks away, that character's controller gains one mission point, maximum three per turn. What? Uh, well, if you're building a mission point team, that could certainly come in handy. That, <laughs> yeah, that could definitely help you get a few mission points per game, I think. All right. Well, that is exciting. Man, and we're not even halfway through yet. We got booster number four coming up. <clears throat> this is going to be a little bit longer of a video, like I said earlier, you, you guys. So let's uh, let's see what else we've got. Another card. So that's already our third tarot card. That is pretty crazy. Okay, so what have we got here? We have... What is this guy's name? We've got a monarch. <laughs> we've got a uncommon magic. Uh, we've got another gorgon. We've got a colossus. Love the Colossus sculpt. And then we've got another, um, what, Green Priestess, right? Looks like. Yeah, okay. So, who do we have? Or what are the, let's see here what these guys can do. So Green Priestess, we already took a look at her. Same thing there. We got Colossus, who's got a Rally Die for opposing attack rolls of five. Free, remove one of Colossus's Rally Dice to use support as free. And then stop, defend. And he's got the X-Men team ability, of course. Charge, 11 attack, super strength, 18 invuln, 3 damage with some empower. Um, 19 on that stop defend click. Not bad at all. For 50 points, I mean, I think he's pretty solid. He's a nice little secondary close attacker. Gives some empower for your friendlies. And uh, it's going to take at least 2 hits to bring him down. Plus support is free. You know, that's pretty useful as well. Um, let's see, we already took a look at this Gorgon. So let's take a look here at Magic, the uncommon version. This character starts the game with any sword equipment equipped. Of course, with the sword bearer trait, leadership, when Magic uses it and succeeds this turn, friendly characters that have uh, X-Men team ability may use it as free. We've seen that trait before. She's also got Mystics and X-Men team ability herself. And um, yeah, charge, precision, 18, energy shield for 65. Or for uh, 30, you've got face teleport, super senses, and prob. I mean, cheap prob, always a good thing. Definitely going to use that. And you got the traded leadership and everything, too. And mystics. Yeah, I, I think both of these magics are definitely great. Oh, snap. This guy's a super rare. <laughs> I did not even notice that. Let's pop him out real fast. So this guy is actually a super rare. I have not heard of him before. Like I said, I haven't read this story myself yet. Very interesting, though. Looks cool. 
he's monarch, so he's like a king, right? <laughs> he's got X-Men, cosmic, mystical, and ruler keywords. Starts with a trait, I do love gifts. Monarch starts the game with one hindering, one water, one blocking terrain marker uh, on his card. When an opposing character generates terrain, after resolutions, you may place a terrain marker of a type they generated on this card. Okay, so every time they barrier, you get another uh, blocking terrain marker. Free, remove a terrain marker from this card. To choose one, generate a terrain marker of that type in a square within range, or remove a terrain marker of that type in a square within range. Very nice. So it's kind of like a free one square barrier or free uh, remove one square barrier. And um, I mean, let's see, it just says generate that. It doesn't say to like remove them at the end of the turn. So I think they might stay there. Not 100% sure. Um, but very cool nonetheless. Then he's got a trait, leadership. When Monarch uses it and succeeds, he may immediately remove a terrain marker from his card. If he does, this turn, friendly characters adjacent to or occupying terrain of that type are considered adjacent to him. Interesting. So he can leadership, and if somebody's in hindering, he can remove his hindering marker, and uh, he can consider them adjacent for his leadership role. Not bad. 50 points. He's got Mystics and Power Cosmic, Team Ability, 7 range, uh, phasing, 11 attack, Pulse Wave, 18 invincible, 3 damage and power. What? <laughs> Pretty crazy stuff there. Um, yeah, not bad, actually, for 50 points. Can do some very interesting things there. Um, and then we, ooh, we got a very nice looking card here with magic. Let's see, Page of Swords. When a character uses steel energy, they heal two clicks instead of one. That is nuts. Two clicks of healing instead of one on your steel energy. That could be huge, you guys. Pretty great stuff in the first four, but on to booster number five here. What do we got next? We've already got two super rares and like three tarot cards, so not bad at all. I haven't seen any equipment yet though. I really want to see some swords here. Um, well, look at that. We got another tarot card though. Very interesting. Who did we pull here? It looks like we've got a storm. Oh, we've got a little Lockheed. We have got a a little soldier. Is that a is that like a aim soldier? No, Orcus soldier. My bad. Uh, we've got the um, Mystique here. The uh, the Danger Room Mystique. Very cool. And who? What in the world? Who is this? Looks like his name is uh, Absalon Mercator. I don't know. <laughs> I never heard of him either. Honestly, looks pretty neat though. Let's see what he can do. One thing I have noticed so far, uh, every pack that I get like a regular rare figure, it seems to be when I get the uh, tarot cards, I think. Or no, didn't I just get one with Monarch? So maybe that's not always true. Uh, but it is nice that if you don't get like a super rare, you have better odds, it seems, so far of getting a tarot card. Uh, but let's start off with Storm here. She's got Marauders, Quiet, Quiet Council, Wakanda, X-Men, Deity, and Ruler keywords. She's got the Sword Bearer trait. She's got a, another trait that gives her knockback, Force Blast as free. When Storm uses it, she may choose the direction of the knockback. Not bad. You get to knock them back into your friendly characters to finish them off. I mean, 45 points, Stealth, Flight, Combat Reflexes, Perplex, and you get whatever sword you want equipped. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty solid. 10 attack, 5 clicks of health. Nothing too crazy there. The the knockback and the force blast and the direction of your choice is pretty nice, which um, actually you can do that within range now. She's got a five range, so she can make some range attacks. Perplex her attack to 11. You know, not bad actually for 45 points. Up next, we've got Lockheed, who's got defend and free, make an attack targeting an opposing character that missed a friendly character since your last turn. Very interesting, kind of like a reverse retaliation. They have to actually miss an attack for him to retail. Uh, 18 defend, running shot, energy explosion, tiny size flight, 45 points, X-Men team ability. Um, yeah, I I'm kind of just happy to get an actual figure of Lockheed for once. I feel like we almost never get that. He's always just a bystander. So uh, he's not bad for 45 points. Nothing too crazy, but I do love Lockheed, so it's nice to have him. Then we've got a generic Arc uh, Orcus soldier, excuse me, and let's see here. He's just got running shot, 10 attack, 17 defense, 2 damage with range combat expert for 25 points, 4 range. Um, so he's shooting 11 for 3 for 25 points. You know, nothing to sneeze at, right? 
that is uh, that could definitely do some damage. Um, and then he has what Sentinel, Robot, and Soldier keywords. Interesting. He's got Sentinel and Robot as well. Um, so you could definitely put him on some robot teams. Very interesting. And we've got Mystique here who has the Danger Room construct we've seen in past sets. So when she makes an attack, you give her an error token for each one in the attack roll, maximum three. If Mystique has two or less error tokens, characters take a maximum of one damage from her attacks, and she takes a maximum of one damage from opponent's attacks, and she can't be healed or chosen for Mastermind, Protected, Pulse Wave. Lessons from the Danger Room Mystique. When Mystique is KO'd by an opposing character this game, uh, when that character makes an attack, other characters can't use shape change. So they've learned from fighting her how to get around shape change, essentially. Only 25 points. You got uh, plasticity, 11 attack precision, 17 super senses, and shape change. So she's really just a, a really good tie-up figure. You just run her up there, park her next to somebody. She makes attacks with 11 to just ping people for one. Um, they got to get through super senses and shape change and the fact that they can't deal her more than one damage. Um, I'd probably try to just poison her to death, honestly, if I could. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's really solid. Brotherhood of Mutants and Robot keyword for only 25 points. All right, so then Absalon Mercator. So he's got stop regeneration. At the beginning of your turn, you may choose an opposing character and roll a d6. On a five or six, deal that character two penetrating damage. Oh, snap. <laughs> Just free penetrating if you roll five or six at the beginning of your turn. Wow, okay. Then he's got exploit weakness and support. Let's see, he's got deity, detective, mystical, ruler. Very interesting character right there. Stealth, impervious, two damage, 11 attack, um, 40 points there. He's got one stop click with that special that uh, just deals free penetrating. So, you know, let's see, nothing too crazy. Exploit and support. So he's a good attacker. He's a good supporter. You know, he's got a stop click to keep him alive. Stealth also pretty nice. And we've got another tarot card here. Two of wands. Hit characters have battle fury until your next turn, even if this card is not in play. Very nice. Just handing out battle fury to hit characters. Um, not good if you're relying on shape change. <laughs> Probably wouldn't want to use that. But, um, you know, otherwise, a solid card to uh, just cut off their range attack potential because they couldn't make range attacks if they have Battle Fury. But also not something you want to run if you have a lot of mind control. You wouldn't be able to mind control them. Very good on very specific type of teams. Um, okay, what do we got here? Oh, snap, we got a Prime. Very nice. Okay, looks like we got the Prime Rogue. The... Uh, the prime Captain Britain rogue. We got another Cyclops, another Orcus soldier. What in the world? <laughs> we got another uh, Storm. And what is this guy? The Fury. Very, very nice. Um, okay, let's take a look here. What do what do these things do? No tarot card in this one, but we got the Prime, so wouldn't expect that. Um, let's take a look at her last. So first we got Cyclops. Um, this is the same one we looked at earlier with the Recruiter trait. Then we've got Orcus Soldier, you know, 25 points, we've seen him. Uh, the Fury, I don't think we saw him, so he's got just some running shot, just robot keyword, so just a generic robot character. 50 points, running shot penetrating for three, invuln, then some flurry with close combat expert. You know, not bad for 50 points, pretty solid, nothing too crazy there. Um, but then we've got Storm, this is the same Storm we took a look at earlier. Okay, so we've really just got the Captain Britain to take a look at here. So she's got the Excalibur uh, X-Men and Mystical keywords, Excalibur Mystical Protector's trait, which gives her Mystics, but only during range attacks. Captain Britain Rogue has Safeguard Mystics, very nice. Offered the Amulet of Right, Charge Flurry. When Captain Britain Rogue hits until your next turn, she has friendly characters within range that she shares a keyword with have Safeguard Outwit. Very nice. When she hits, all your friendly characters within range, the share keyword gets safeguard outwit. Very good. Uh, just, you know, give everybody 
out, uh, some protection from outwit is always useful. Precision strike and steel energy, of course. Perplex and enhancement, I like that a lot. Those are two of my favorite powers. Perplex attack, enhance damage, you know. <laughs> uh, you got 100 or 50 point lines, so charge, flurry, 12 attack, 4 damage. Pretty great there. Quake, if you want to flurry quake on a group of people. Invincible, very nice. And if she hits, um, let me see, double check here that when she hits until your next turn, she has friendly characters within range she shares a keyword with. Okay, so yeah, she's still friendly to herself and within range of herself. So yes, she's got a six range for that. So she will also give herself protected outwit if she hits. Um, you know, pretty solid at 52. I kind of like the 50 line better because you're getting just about everything you're getting over here. Um, I mean, you're kind of missing out like one on all the stats. And uh, Invincible is definitely better than Impervious, in my opinion. I like Invincible a little more. Um, solid at both point lines. Like her a lot. Little Steel Energy there at the end of her dial. So, pretty cool stuff. All right, we still got four more boosters to go through here. And uh, let's see, we've seen two Super Rares and a Rare Prime. So, possible to see another Super Rare. Still potential to see a Chase. Not unheard of to get a Chase and a Prime. Um... What do we got here? Oh, we got a new equipment object to take a look at. Oh, yeah. What is this? I gotta see. <clears throat> Looks pretty cool, actually. Is this like a... Okay. It's like a dragon wing or something. Almost looked like a lightsaber for a second. Ten points. Alluvium. Very cool. Guessing it comes with this girl <laughs> right here. Guy. What is this? Very cool looking. I don't know who this character is either. I feel horrible when I don't know the characters, you guys. But, uh, you know, my forte is the clicks themselves. So let's see. This is Red Root, the forest. Very nice. Looks very cool. Has that awesome sword. Um, who else did we get here? Um, I don't think we've seen him. We have uh, Solemn, another magic. Uh, we've got Roulette, and then uh, another Gorgon, although I think that might be a different Gorgon. Let me see here. Whoop. Okay, so let's take a look at her last. Um, yeah, this is a different Gorgon. He's got the Great Captains of Krakoa trait, and um, yes, I like this one a lot here. He's got Charge with a 12 attack, 18 willpower, 3 damage, with Empower for 65 points or 30 points, you get most of that, but you also get that, you know, traded leadership. So 30 point line, both lines are pretty good. I like that 12 attack to start out with on the higher point line, very solid. And again, depending on what swords we get, he's got the sword bearer trait, so could be pretty awesome. We've got Roulette, once per game, Roulette may reroll a critical hit anywhere on the map. And once per game, she may reroll a critical miss anywhere on the map, super useful. Um, definitely probably want to kill her first. Definitely probably. Yes, definitely probably. Uh, 30 points for some Force Blast, Super Senses, and Prob. Only a 16 defense. So, yeah, I'd probably go for her first. Out with the Super Senses and just shoot her down, one-shot her, get rid of her. You don't want to reroll those crit misses and crit hits anywhere on the map. Uh, but that's a very powerful effect to have. That's why I'm saying go for her first, because, uh, that's going to be annoying. And then we've already seen this magic. And then Solemn here, uh, has the sword bearer trait. And then he has, um, yeah, that's about it. 85 points, charge, precision, 18, invulnerability, and 4 damage. And then you've got charge, precision, 17 for 3, if you want to play him at 45. Um, so it's really 90 or 50, right? Because you're adding the sword. You know, not bad. We'll have to see what all the swords do again uh, to really, like, think about all the options these guys could potentially have. But we've got one sword right here. Um, so, for 10 points, this one gives us Blades, Claws, Fangs. When this character uses it after resolutions, this character may use Smoke Cloud as free. Okay, not bad. Um, I do really want to take a look at the back of this card here. So, I really wanted to take a look at the back of this card just to see, because uh, the way the Sword Bearer traits are written, right, this character starts the game with any sword equipment equipped. Okay, um, I'm not seeing anything here that's telling me, right, this is a sword object uh, character that's equipped with this, can use this effect uh, when it's unequipped, place it in the previously equipped character's square, yeah. Equip any unequipped drop. I don't see anything here that says, like, this is a sword equipment 
And it doesn't have sword in the name, indestructible, any drop, blah, 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 effect. Yeah, so um, I feel like that's going to need an errata, honestly. They're going to have to specify what counts as a sword equipment, what doesn't. Maybe specifically just the stuff in this set. Or, you know, if you could say anything that's called a sword, maybe could count. But, you know, I would assume it's just the swords in this set. So we'll have to see an official errata to fully understand that. But um, for now, I mean, I would just play it as equipping only from the swords in the set. Anywho, uh, then she's got uh, Red, Red Root of the Forest has Arako, Mystical, and Warrior keywords. Um, sword Bearer trait, a trait twisting, weaving, growing. When Red Root the Forest uses Smoke Cloud after resolutions, you may generate a Twisting Vine Bystander Max 3 in a square with a hindering terrain marker generated during that action. Free, choose one to generate in a square within six squares in line of fire. A hindering terrain marker, a twisting vine, bystander max three. So Red Root here has the potential to generate two twisting vine bystanders in a turn, one from this and one after using Smoke Cloud. Um, very cool. And then you um, also have shifting foliage, plasticity and stealth, free, Placed Red Root, the forest, in a square of hindering terrain within six squares in line of fire. Also very nice. You could just uh, use that free trait to place one six squares out. Place Red Root in that and then um, attack from there. Only a four movement. Hold on a second. Uh, what's that? That's plasticity stealth. So no charge or anything. Kind of just places themselves between the, uh, the hindering there. 12 attack with smoke cloud. 17 willpower. 3 damage exploit. Um, you're going to have the blades from the sword double target so they can target two characters. Um, what does the Twisting Vines do here? We've got unique modifier if a friendly character named Red Root the Forest is within three squares. Adjacent opposing characters modify attack and defense minus one. And they uh, have some ink cap and some plasticity. So I think that's actually pretty nice. You could really lock down your opponent's whole team with that and lower their stats. So... Not bad at all. I think that's a pretty interesting one for only 60 points. But uh, moving on next. All right, three more boosters to go. Not sure if we're going to see anything else too crazy. We've already got three super rares um, and a rare prime. So if we're lucky, we'll pull a chase. Um, hopefully we'll at least see another sword or two. Uh, maybe we'll get another tarot card. Let's see. I see some bubble wrap. That's always a good sign. You always want to see bubble wrap here. Oh my goodness, what is this? What is this? This looks epic, whatever it is. What? Oh my goodness. Wow, that looks so cool. Uh, looks like this is War. I actually thought he was a chase for a second. He looks so awesome. Uh, he's only a rare, but wow, he looks really cool. So we did get another sword, like I was hoping. Um, this looks like a really cool one, too. It's like all fiery. Uh, this is Vermilion, it looks like. Very nice. Very cool sword right there. Yes, I love it. I love flaming swords. So, uh, let's see, what else do we got? We got another Cyclops in the blue suit. Um, is that another roulette, looks like? Um, oh, is that a... Is that an X-23? No, wait. Honey Badger. That's Honey Badger. Oh my goodness. We've got Honey Badger and we've got Jean Grey. Very nice. Very interesting booster. Haven't even looked at any of these figures yet. I love how the last couple boosters can always be a surprise. You think, oh, I got one that's all duplicates, but then <laughs> it's all new stuff here. So let's just take a look at that last. Okay, starting with Cyclops. Great captain trait we've seen before. Leadership that gives free uh, X-Men team ability. Then you've got 50 points for running shot, range combat expert. So he's shooting 11 for four. X-Men team ability, 18 defense. Nothing too crazy there. You know, what is he, 50 points I said? Only X-Men uh, keywords and team ability. Okay, nothing crazy, um, but he is a great captain. So um, a lot of just kind of decent, you know, Cyclopses here. We got Roulette, we've already seen her. Can reroll crit misses and hits anywhere on the map. Uh, Honey Badger. Let's take a look at her. Um, she's got Champions, New Mutants, Weapon X, X-Men, Assassin, Martial Artist keywords. Very nice. 
I never leave him behind. At the beginning of the game, generate a Jonathan bystander. At the beginning of your turn, you may place Jonathan in a square adjacent to Honey Badger. Very cool. So you can like charge blades, exploit on somebody. Next turn, you kind of call him right back. Very interesting. Invincible super senses. I feel no pain. Very cool. Um, yeah, wow. 80 or 50 charge blades exploit. Invincible super senses is great. Uh, if you got the uh, wild card team ability. Um, very good, I think, at either point value. You got some regen there to heal up. Flurry, a lot of flurry blades. And you just, at the beginning of the game, you get that free charge blades exploit. Tiny size too. You can carry Jonathan around with you. Very nice. Love it. Very cool. I don't think we've had Honey Badger in clicks before, so it's very nice to get one. Uh, we've got Jean Grey seeing the enemy threats and power. When Jean Grey is targeted by an attack after resolutions, you may place her adjacent to a friendly character within range. Very cool. Um, this is like the mental projection of Jean Grey. She's got Phoenix Force, X Factor, X Force, X Men. Very cool. Love this. I love the whole idea of like mental projection version of a character. Um, <clears throat> then she's got stealth with flight, TK, barrier, leadership, 35 points. I think she's amazing for 35 points, honestly. I mean, she can carry somebody around with flight. She can TK people around. She can barrier for you. She can leadership off characters, X-Men team ability, uh, and power traded. I mean, what more can you ask for for 35 points, right? That's like one, two, three, four, five ways to help your team out. Um, yeah. A six, actually, if you include just carrying somebody. So very cool. Very, very effective support character for the points. Like her a lot. But let's take a look at War here. Uh, see, he's got a Sword Vermilion. Ten points. Blades, Claws, Fangs. When this character uses it after resolutions, deal one damage to each opposing character adjacent to the hit target. Very cool. Just big whoosh, flame strike through all of the adjacent characters. Um, again, I'm not seeing anything on the back there. Oh, well. Um... I'm sure they'll let us know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's got the sword bearer trait, um, Arako horseman warrior keywords. The first children. At the beginning of the game, if your starting force has two or more characters with the horseman keyword, this game war has steel energy, but with close or range attacks. Very nice. If a friendly character named Apocalypse, Annihilation, or Genesis is on your force, modify War's attack and defense by plus one. Okay, very cool. I like that a lot. So uh, definitely going to be rocking some horseman teams, right? Uh, we've got Quake and Giant Reach 3. Pff, very good. Uh, 12 movement flight with that charge Quake. 4 damage exploit on top of that. Like, why would you even run a, want to roll for blades at that point? Um, and then, yeah, just for uh, 45 points. So really, it's 70 or 50. I mean, 75 or 50, because you're going to be wanting to give them that sword. Very solid at both point lines, I think. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Love the sculpt. Love the flaming sword. Very nice. Um, so that was an exciting booster. We still got two more left to go. Um, let's start with this one here. <clears throat> still hoping for a chase, you guys. Still hoping and dreaming we might get a chase. Um, though I would be happy with another tarot card. There, another tarot card. <laughs> uh, or another equipment would also be cool too. A lot of tarot cards. What is this, our fourth, fifth? Fifth tarot card. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty nice. I gotta say, five tarot cards per brick. I mean, that's not guaranteed, obviously. <laughs> No guarantees on that. Uh, probably more like three or four, I feel like, would be average. Um, some characters we haven't seen here yet. Um, see, we already saw uh, Solemn and Lockheed, but we have a Cable and a uh, Sink and an Emma Frost, it looks like there. Yes, very nice. Okay. Cool. So let's take a look at them. Solemn, uh, I believe we already saw him. Oh no, he can reduce penetrating damage. I think we saw a different one. Or did I? I just totally missed that on the first one. I don't think I read that trait that he could reduce penetrating damage the first time. That makes him a little bit better in my opinion. Yes, definitely. Reducing penetrating on the invuln, very useful. Um, okay, then we've got Lockheed. Already took a look at him with his almost retail type thing. We've got Cable, who's got Sword. X-Force, X-Men, Future Soldier, Warrior. Got a Swordbearer trait. Rally, 
free remove one of Cable's rally dice. If you do this turn when Cable uses perplex or outwit, he may use it to target a character regardless of line of fire. Very nice. So he doesn't have to see a character to outwit or perplex them. Very useful. 70 or 40, so we're talking 75, 45 with the sword. Running shot, penetrating blast, 18 toughness, three damage perplex. Um, for 40, I think I prefer the 40 point line, honestly. Outwit that potentially doesn't need line of fire is super useful. And uh, he'll get blades from whatever sword you put on him. So 45 points seems super solid to me. You got the six range double target for the running shot penetrating blast. You know, he can perplex his attack to 12. So for 75, I think that's pretty solid as well. Um, you can also perplex friendlies or perplex down opposing characters, you know. I think he's solid. I like him a lot, actually. He's sword, too. So uh, I think sword is going to be a force to be reckoned with here pretty soon. We've got Sync, uh, who also has sword keyword. Very cool. Uh, phase teleport once per turn when another friendly character within range heals. After resolutions, heal Sync one click. Very cool. Okay. Free. Choose a friendly character. Uh, a friendly standard character, sorry, that's very specific, standard character, uh, within range and line of fire, and two displayed standard powers that character can use. This turn, Sync can use the chosen powers. Very cool. You could, uh, see he's got five range, starts with precision and willpower, 70 points, pretty long dial there, and he heals a click every time a friendly character heals too, so... Uh, put him with somebody that heals like a free click every turn like Wolverine or somebody and uh, you'll be golden with him You can choose two powers. So, you know choosing like charge flurry. Well They have to be displayed so you can choose like charge Exploit or charge close combat expert or like running shot penetrating blast running shot pulse wave He already has pulse wave and dial lots of cool combos you could do with that guy honestly pretty neat Like him. All right, then we've got Emma Frost this one looks very nice. Improved targeting for uh, hindering and characters. Very useful. Uh, trait diamond form free. Replace Emma Frost with the number 100 Emma Frost on the same click number. So we're going to have to go out, get that OP kit uh, Emma Frost, and play them together. Kind of like a shifting focus, seems like. Then so utterly predictable. Super senses but succeeds on a 4 through 6 protected outwit. Very nice. 4 to 6 super senses protected outwit. Like that a lot. Um, give her like Wonder Woman, uh, go snap, give her like the Wonder Woman equipment or something. So, uh, she's got a three through six senses. Be very nice. <clears throat> the bracelets, I mean. Uh, so yeah, leadership, when Emma Frost uses it and succeeds, you may instead generate a bystander on this card. Each bystander on this card has a max one. Nice. When she uses it and succeeds, you may instead generate. So you don't get to take off a token, but you could generate one of these bystanders. So you got... One with a 10 attack, 6 range mind control. Looks like they all have the same stats. One's got penetrating blast. One's got outwit. One's got prob. One's got perplex. Very nice. Very useful. All of them definitely uh, could come up. Uh, 6 range double target for mind control or penetrating blast. You got the super senses protected outwit and that special leadership to generate those. I like the Sum of Frost a lot, especially when we see what that number 100 can do to kind of shifting focus into it a little bit. Be very cool. Um, all right, and we've got another here, Eight of Pentacles. When a character uses knockback, they can knock back a character up to six squares instead of three. If that character can use Force Blast, they can choose the direction of the knockback. Very powerful, actually, um, if you happen to have some Force Blast characters on your team. Um, you know, somebody that can use, like, Force Blast that's free would be cool, too. Or just somebody that happens to have, like, Running Shot, Force Blast. Like, you know, there's a lot of Cyclopses that have that. So very neat. Very cool tarot card there. And then there was one, you guys. Last chance at a chase. Hope we get one. Won't be sad if we don't. We got some really cool stuff here. Um, three super rares, rare prime. We got two equipment. We got five tarot cards. So out of one brick, I have enough tarot cards to build a deck. Because if you guys didn't already know, you need at least five tarot cards to build a tarot deck for your sideline. Um, oh, I do see bubble wrap. Let's see, what have we got here? Another sword, sweet. I am glad to see another sword. Doesn't look like a chase though, I don't believe. But uh, what sword did we pull here? Um, oh, very cool. Very pretty little sword, Mercy. Very nice. Um, and let's see, so we've got 
a white priestess. Okay. A Colossus. Um, that's not, I thought that was roulette. That's tarot. Okay. Uh, we've got Sebastian Shaw from the, uh, you know, danger room construct. And then we've got Iska the Unbeaten with her mercy sword. So let us take a look, see what we've got here. So three swords, five tarot cards, three super rares, rare prime, not too shabby. I got to say, uh, pretty good odds of pulling, you know, very different things here, depending on what you're going for. So um, actually, let's take a look at that last. We got Sebastian Shaw. When Sebastian Shaw makes an attack, give him an error token. Of course, we've already seen this same thing. Um, he takes maximum one damage, deals a maximum one damage, can't be chosen for mastermind, etc. Uh, when Sebastian Shaw is KO'd by an opposing character, this game that char uh, when that character is targeted by an attack, the attacker can't positively modify their combat values. Pretty solid there. So they basically can't be perplexed or close combat or range combat expert, and none of that. So it starts with leap climb, super strength, uh, enhancement. Then uh, later, he's going to get some charge, 11, 19 toughness, 4 damage, uh, close combat expert, so really 12 for 5. Dang, that is crazy. If you can actually get this guy the error tokens, he will be doing some damage for 30 points. Uh, but, I mean, 30 points just for a guy that has enhancement and takes a maximum of 1 damage, so he can kind of body block a little bit. Not too shabby for that either. Uh, so Taro, shifting the fates for all characters with this trait. When you would draw a tarot card from your deck, you may instead draw two and choose one to use and put the other one at the bottom of your deck. Very nice. Gives you a lot more options for what you're getting. Uh, shape change, free, roll a d6. Tarot can use the corresponding power till your next turn. One through three, perplex. Four through six, outwit. Gives you 50-50 odds of getting either of those. Stealth, in cap, full range, triple target for that in cap. Only 30 points. Um, I kind of feel like this would be uh, Hellions and X-Men. I kind of feel like this would be a must-have for only 30 points if you're really, really hardcore going into a tarot card deck strategy because pulling those two cards is going to be nuts. And she's got, you know, a shape change with a chance at outwit or perplex each turn. Very solid Colossus. Already seen what he can do. White Priestess, another generic mystical character here. Um, penetrating Blast, Enhancement, 25 points. Super Senses with a 17. Uh, full range. So again, nothing super crazy, but, you know, 25 points for Penetrating Blast and Enhancement. Not bad at all. If she does take a hit, uh, she kind of gives you some prob. So pretty solid little generic right there. I do love me some generic armies from time to time. So very cool. Iska the Unbeaten has, uh, well, take a look at the sword. 10 points, Blades Claws, once per turn. When this character is attacked, you may re-roll the attack. Very cool. Very nice. This is going to be one you're going to want to put on a lot of people, I feel like. Every time they get hit, you can just re-roll it once per turn. That's very nice. Um, so, yeah, of course, Sword Bearer trait. The first time Iska the Unbeaten would be KO'd. Instead, turn her to her last non-KO click. Roll a d6, heal her equal to half the result. Protected Pulse Wave. Um, I cannot lose. Yeah, so uh, only 70 points, 75 with the sword. You got charge, blades, basically. Invuln, shape change, not bad. Super sense of shape change at the end, you know, and that you kind of got that once per game, save yourself uh, flurry blades there too. Not bad at all. I like her. Um, so cool stuff. All right, well, I'm sorry I couldn't show you guys a chase today, but uh, we got to take a look at a lot of equipment, a lot of super rares we haven't seen. Um, a lot of tarot cards, too, so pretty happy about that. Um, this video has already gone on long enough. Oh, before I forget, let's at least take a look at the Legacy card. I'll save the rest of this stuff for another video since this one is quite long. But let's see what we've got. Okay, oh, -ho, Sentinel Mark II Legacy card. I love the sculpt. Very cool. So let's see. Prime Directive. At the beginning of your turn, Sentinel Mark II may move one square. If an opposing character with the X-Men or Brotherhood of Mutants keyword is on the map, they may move one additional square. So that's very nice. If your opponent is playing some mutants, they basically get a sidestep at the beginning of your turn. Very nice. Oh, improved movement destroys blocking. 
very cool. <laughs> uh, so they can just walk right through the blocking. Uh, when Sentinel Mark II KOs a character after resolutions, heal it one click. Once per game, if the KO'd character has either the Brotherhood of Mutants or X-Men keyword or team ability, modify its combat values by plus one this game. Ooh, every time he... Uh, Every time he kills a mutant, he gets plus one all stats. Very powerful. Running shot, force blast, force blast as free. Very cool. Um, comes in handy with that tarot card we took a look at, so we could double the knockback and place them somewhere else. Then if Sentinel Mark II rolls doubles with a successful attack roll, damage dealt by that attack is penetrating and can't be evaded. Wow, very nice, especially if you crit hit. Well, if you crit hit, it can't be evaded anyway, but uh, dang. Uh, does this have, is this open? Oh my gosh, it does. Very cool. Legacy card. Let's see here. So from Giant Size X-Men, 10 range, double target. You've got 10 movement running shot, 11 attack, 17 invuln, 4 damage with colossal size. Uh, let's see, he's 150, 100, or 30 points. So you got 150 here, which gets you 15 clicks of health with some regen, and of course, healing a click every time you KO something. Um, let's see, that whole middle part there, starting at 100 points, is where he gets the uh, special running shot and the special energy shield and toughness. Okay. And uh, he starts with the special damage power, rolls doubles, they can't be evaded, it's penetrating, etc. Um, very cool. Uh, not great stats. <laughs> As uh, back in the day, you know, dropping to an 8 and a 9 with a 15 wasn't so bad. Kind of bad now. Um, yeah, but a lot of health and a lot of range. Giant size is going to keep him going. Um, yeah, not bad. So for 30 points, he's got 4 clicks. Running shot, pulse wave, perplex. For 30 points, not, to, not too bad for the 10 range. Very interesting, very cool. And again, you can move through blocking and uh, move for free a square every turn. Very cool stuff. All right, um, if you're lucky enough to have him, then good for you. Uh, I don't have mine anymore. <laughs> Too bad. Oh, well. All right, so that does it for this. I'm going to save the rest of it for a separate unboxing video. And it's also super hot out here while I'm filming. So to uh, wrap this up quickly, I'm just going to do my outro right here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash the like button. Helps me out a lot. Let me know in the comments, of course, what did you like here? What was your favorite thing I pulled? What are you most excited for? What are you still hoping to see out of this set? I'd love to hear all your thoughts and opinions about it. Um, don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. And of course, if you'd like to help support the channel even more, check the links in the description for our Patreon so you can see your name here in the credits with all these awesome people. So uh, thank you guys for watching. And until next time, this has been HeroClix Headquarters signing off.